review of the uh, Strava Wind Analysis site. So I made a video about a similar topic before, but I redid the website completely. So today I'll be showing off some of the features on the newly created website. So this will be a slightly technical talk. I'll discuss some technical elements of uh, the process of making this website and how it works a little bit in the back end. So the main page is a standard bootstrap web page. So it uses OAuth, so you can uh, log in through OAuth here. This is an image with a hyperlink. So the first thing is you notice that um, you can change the purpose of the site. So it's not only wind analytics anymore. It's also machine learning analytics and data visualization. So lots of charts you can see here using a chart.js library. We use scikit-learn in the backend for machine learning analytics. So we have a lot of different graphs, as you can see here. And they stay consistent throughout. I have a very um, somewhat smart um, chart builder system. So the amount of code repetition for each of these charts is fairly minimal. It's mostly about applying decorators and um, other design patterns to ensure that uh, I supplement the data as required and I have data abstracted. So we can see here we have a leaderboard historic segment performance chart. These are pretty common too. I have different bar graphs segmenting into these buckets. And um, this is a wind overlay, so it takes the average speed in certain wind directions that it gets using Dark Sky API and buckets them onto this uh, radar chart. And lastly, I have some screenshots here. And I have my uh, built using slash powered by. Uh, important to know for this is um, I'm actually required by Strava and Dark Sky to say that I'm powered by them. So that's mostly why I have this section. Not included here is uh, Redis, actually, and Chart.js, which I'm going to be adding soon. So if we head over to Strava, we get to our main page. So this I call the feed page. So this is a feed using a content-based recommender system that is essentially a heuristic. So unlike a collaborative filtering model, this one is solely based on the qualities of the items themselves. So it assigns points. So for example, if it's a personal best, if it's more recent. So more recent rides are heavily weighted because I want more recent content. So users come back, they go on the feed, and then they see the more recent items and they click on it. I also weigh points for leaderboard finishes, so top 10 will show up much higher, and so will um, personal bests. If you get a KOM and it's recent, it'll definitely show up among the first. So one of my last rides was in uh, New York here, so we can see East Mountain Clockwise uh, shows up much before other ones. These are ones I did uh, personal bests in. And this continues scrolling for a while, and then you can just click view more, and then uh, you can view more that way. It actually preloads everything onto the screen into one. The Jax request to get to all of them. So the first time takes a little bit of time to load until you warm up the cache. Uh, after that, you can scroll as much as you want. The only reason I disabled it from going unlimited is I don't want to waste a Google, Map, Google Maps API keys. So we have the polyline just as before with the Google Maps. You can click on any of these. It'll send you to the details page. I also have a little blog discussing uh, recent additions. So let's just, uh, I mentioned warming up the cache. I actually use Redis, so it's a in-memory, highly scalable data structure server. So essentially, every any time there's two types of caches I do. One type of cache is the permanent cache. So I make sure that I get saved to disk. It's essentially, for example, weather, weather data. It will never change, it remains static. So I'm going to actually uh, save that with no expiry date. But stuff like this, the home page will expire within three hours. The user can manually reset the cache for their own profile in case this happened to go on a ride, but in general I preserve it for three hours. And that's configurable inside the config.js. So here's the detailed analysis page, so you can pick from your past segments, I did a lot. So the first time you load this webpage actually takes a while to load up. I added a filtering option, so I can filter, let's say, on 5k plus. It loads up the webpage like that, recursively on all the activities. So it actually takes a while to do all of the Strava requests. But again, it caches these as well. So everything is cached. And it's very fast the second time. So I'm, I'm still going to add the aggregate visualization after the comparison later in a different version. But I'm still filling out the site, so it's all feature complete. So this one actually does Ajax request. It uh, doesn't use templating, so I also use handlebars for templating. It doesn't use templating for this, which is jQuery putting an Ajax request to our backend, which does it recursively on all the activities. So most of the endpoints are actually cached. I have a, Strata, a Strava data handler. So the Strava data handler handles all of the communication with the Strava API. And that makes it easy to cache, because then I can cache all within the handler. I don't need to deal with secondary logic. 
like uh, doing a jump point if I can just cache where all the data is coming from. Just Strava data hacks. So I can just pick any segment, have some basic component. So this is the main page like before. So we have a left hand column using M framework for the front end, which is a Portuguese front end framework. Again, we get another Google Maps with the polyline. Some basic info over here. We got some segment info, which is pretty nice. So I can click on my name. And I get some uh, something here. So it looks like a uh, tend to always fall within this bucket of the leader for K. I get to see like a nice little chart here of my performance. So it looks like I'm actually pretty stable, which is pretty interesting. I can also see other people, so I can go look at this guy. This guy only went once and he went really fast. Okay. I know this guy rides a lot. Eric. Oh Jeremy Jeremy hat actually does a lot. Oh weird. You didn't even do a lot. Let's see this guy. Huh. So I can't really seem to find anyone that's really uh, hardcore about this place. I saw Milo guy also a lot. No. Anyways, so this is that. Um, you get to see individual people's. So I'll pick a more interesting segment to show later. And now for chart visualization. So this is pretty cool. So I can do individual effort segmented. Let me actually pick a better segment because that one doesn't have a lot of data on it. Uh, let's do. Um, Maybe I can find a uh, rail trail south to some freedom. Has lots of people. So 1920. Okay. So as you can see here, this guy, I, if I recall, even takes a while to load. So you can see here, 331 times he went between 20 to 30k. 215 times. And look at that chart. So we got some healthy chart. Oh my gosh. This will actually mess up my other visualizations so they're slow. But anyways, you can see I can also see myself here. We got somewhere healthy here. Yeah. I also added a question mark, so I didn't even discuss with the stable, sorry. So we get some weather integrated into here, so these are just the leaderboard. But I also get this influence rating, which uses a vector algorithm. So essentially, I take into consideration, and I even have a little explanation that pops up here. I added this new, some people are questioning, what is this influence rating? So pretty much the influence scoring uh, works by taking into consideration the wind direction, the wind speed, the ride direction, the segment direction, and the ride that the athlete's riding at. It points to some vector manipulation and essentially there was an empirical study done on how much uh, wind affects road cycling. Now obviously this isn't accurate. I'm going to be assuming if you're doing a segment or race you have a decent posture on a decent road bike. So using all these figures together I combined all the data and essentially this influence rating is what the wind adjusted speed should be. So I'd have to add the influence score. So if it's lower, that means you got helped by the wind a lot more than someone else. And it kind of makes sense. If you look at the wind directions, you get to see that this um, wind is blowing in a good direction. This wind is blowing to help. Up. So you got minus 14. And you can see based off the wind speed and the wind direction, the info sort of makes sense. So this was the uh, initial core idea of the site before I uh, expanded to data visualization and machine learning as well. So this is my standard chart, so we can do individual efforts segmented, so these are my individual efforts, so it looks like uh, I tend to go more towards the 40 to 50k. The all efforts segmented uh, actually looks at all the data, so this one's, this segment's really big, so it's like 2,236 people went between 20 to 30k, so we can see here this bucket of 40 to 50, it's pretty low, and one guy went over 50k. So I got my uh, individual performance, this is the one you saw before in the modal. This one's really cool, and this is the leaderboard historical performance. So this is everyone, so let me just make this really small. So I can actually track down everyone, and I can remove people from here as I want. And I can see their performance. So I'm tracking exactly with this German hat guy. This guy has the K on. So it actually seems like I tend to go faster than him. It's kind of strange. So he's probably just um, coasting on this part, this leg, while I'm uh, trying to see him harder. So this is a pretty cool visualization. I also got the individual wind radar. So this is another one I discussed on the main page. You get to see it in action right now. So same idea. It's just take the average of um, each direction. It's a lot of API keys. And I'm going to be talking about um, my API limiting. So for weather APIs, I use Dark Sky, as I mentioned before. But I actually have a limit of 1,000 free API keys. So to prevent abuse by user, I actually put a hard limit on 500. So I handle that inside of my... Uh, Dark Sky um, data handler. 
and I check MongoDB and each day each user has 500, if they exceed, the site won't crash, it won't get kicked off the site, but you just won't be able to do any anything with wind or weather data. So individual wind radar won't load and in the overview page you'll get an error message and these will get blanked out. Okay. So aside from this, we also got a performance regression analysis. So it looks like I'm getting worse. Um, the thing is, I actually um, use scikit-learn for this. So this is a simple linear regression. It's a line of best fit. That's how it can best be understood. You do a line of best fit over all the points. And uh, yeah, using Python, this is how it's a multi-tier architecture. I have a separate flash server running. And they communicate within each other. They happen to be on the same AWS instance, but I could move them to another instance if required. And I'm still going to be working on the athlete comparison feature as well. So for charts, the interesting thing about charts is the way I built it. I use a base class, just an abstract chart. Then we got our bar, bar graph, we got our performance line chart, scatter plot. I'll be showing the scatter plot later. Bar graph, radar chart. All of them have data and options. So those are implemented within the subclass of the abstract chart. And then we got decorators, which apply data sets, if you want, or options. Then I got charts util, which handles the color scheme. So we got a sorted or a shuffled color set depending on uh, what type of chart and what type of uh, color scheme I want. And integrating all those, I can just provide more data sets at runtime or remove data sets. And uh, basically save code, combined with my data handlers. It's actually not too much code in producing a new chart, as long as you're using a similar mechanism as before. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, next up, I implemented rides as well. So similar idea, I can filter. This is all cached, you can search by ride ID. Uh, average speed as well. So these are filtered server-sided, I guess, because you can cache it. But also, um, I might migrate to client-sided filtering later. If I actually get a simple object model going, it shouldn't be too bad. So we're not do the request again. But for rides, at least, it's not very hard because usually people don't have a lot of rides. But for segments, it's becoming an issue because you can have up to 2,000 segments. And it's actually a bit of computation. Also, you can load in them from the API. So you can take a ride, uh, any ride. One of the issues with my uh, zooming in actually isn't really uh, on point. So this is a pretty slow one. Yeah, it looks like I've got a bit of computer wind correlation. So it's just a model like before. The cool thing about this is uh, not so much the rise list, which is, I guess, pretty cool. You could filter on a uh, specific criteria, like 100 kilometers, 200 kilometers. But you can do aggregate visualization. And this uses a um, clustering algorithm. So I just introduced this. So you can go through any cluster and you can see the ride. So Oakville, May 3, 2015, speed and the distance. I can remove clusters if I want. Also, similar idea as before. It's all built into the ChurchJS library. I can also apply more clusters I can apply. Again, this uses the my uh, Python backend with Flask and scikit-learn. It says unsupervised machine learning model using k-means. So I specify k, parameter k, which is the number of clusters, which is adjustable by the user. Press apply and it'll generate the clustering. So I might change this in the future and uh, change it by years, so you can pick which year you want. So personally, I think this is pretty cool because it brings a distinguishment between the different types of rides that a person has. And if you look, it actually makes sort of sense, especially as you go more up. It's like these are the short and fast rides, these are so-so rides, and so on. Somewhere around the sweet spot, I'd say maybe four, or at least for for me. I'd say these definitely differentiate between the short rides, mediumish rides, longish, long rides, maybe even five would be appropriate for this. So yeah, this is the K-means cluster that I have set. So again, this is all cached using Redis. Inside the settings page, so you can filter non-cycling rides. So you could, if you untick this in MongoDB, I'll save it. I use MongoDB. To save user profiles, uh, so you can untick it, and then inside rides you'll actually get your skating rides or running runs as well. You also have some basic profile, um, sort of profile details here, and this is the weather API page. So I actually use quite a bit, 391 requests if I can do. Even if the requests are cached, I still count count it as a request. Because people know. So you can reset your cache manually. Or you can apply changes. Anytime you apply changes, it resets your. Cache. So that's important to know. 
uh, inside MongoDB, all I really store is the basic profile stuff that was listed from Strava in setting up the OAuth. And I also store the um, number of logins. So this is actually the number of times you press home, it's not actually the number of logins. And uh, the weather it takes each every day, I store that in a dictionary. So the key is the day and the uh, number is the number of requests done. So I can monitor if anyone's really abusing the system. So yeah, that's pretty much my site. Um, slight improvement from last time. So again, you can click on these and I'll send you straight over there. I also still have my legacy website. So I believe it's slash legacy. Let's go home. Blog. I think I can it here, yeah. You can still go on the old one, which is here. I actually patched it so you don't see the weather API keys in front. So it does a HTTP request in the background to actually fetch the weather data. But yeah, so this is pretty much the site. Uh, yeah, this is the old one using materialized CSS. It was pretty good for a first site. It's not bad at all. So yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. And uh, try to use it. Let me know in the comments below what your feedback is. And yeah, thanks for watching.